Hey everybody, on today's episode, your boy, I'm back, the fantasy hitman, going to drop some knowledge for you, the truth about fantasy wide receivers, looking at those guys that finished number one through ten. We're going to break down these games, the wild weekend of games, and of course, some news. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, leave a comment, and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, Scooter be back, America. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. If you're nasty, I am your host for the day, Mike the Fantasy Man Wright, with my best friend, mm. Jason Moore. Mm. Here to party. Hot off some very heated pickleball action. It was a couple hours of competition, of dominance, of uh, realizing that because we have Kyle the Borgogan, he's yes. newer. Uh, he's got a, a nice skill set. He's going to come to form, but it, it helped me realize that if friends come out and sure. want to play with us, mm -hmm. it's not going to go well for them. No, no, it will not. And uh, we there was like a big pickleball tournament here this past week and apparently there was some celebrity play of our own larry fitzgerald teamed up with michael phelps yes and i'll just put it out there the challenge is open oh absolutely if you want to be made the fool mr fitzgerald mr phelps would bring your olympic medals please and i and we will take them Larry, we love you, okay? We are longtime Cardinal fans, Arizona natives, and we would it would give us such pleasure to destroy you at Pickleball. Absolutely. Uh, that, would, that would be a great time for us. Uh, if you did not see the memo, Andy is out. He had to have a, a little cleanup surgery over the weekend. We're not exactly sure when he'll be back. Could be sooner. I think he's going to make the next episode. I'm going to put this out You're there. It I out? think he's uh, back for the next episode. We are talking about the truth. Because look, we can't talk about the 2021 season anymore because that fantasy football season is done. Well, I mean, we can't project. Mm -hmm. We can reflect, though. We can reflect. And From we can, projection to reflection, we can discern what <laughs> is real from. I'm what really is. upset you didn't throw another rhyme in there. I don't know what it would have been. Yeah, but I set you. I I yeah, I, put, I set I set you up with just rhyme with orange, man. <laughs> I don't know what it would have been, but just like that—that that was like you could have just made a connection, Jason. Oh, uh, get body! All right, let's change seats here, Brooks. You're <laughs> you're up on this side of the camera. Let's go. No, I'll no. Okay, well then you stay quiet back there. We're gonna be talking the truth about fantasy wide receivers. We uh, hit the quarterbacks and the running backs on the past shows. Please follow the show on social media on Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can follow Jason at Jason FFL. Andy is at Andy Holloway. I am at FF Hitman. And we are on Instagram as well. We have those uh, same handles. And we're on the TikTok. Mm -hmm. Our our socials, they are cranking out the memes during these these uh playoff weekends. The playoffs having are, a good time. Yeah, the playoffs are a time for less insightfulness, more inciting. Just just have a good time. Yeah, have a good time or lob grenades and get out of the way. Speaking yeah. of having a good time, we were treated to another delightful playoff weekend. The Bengals take down the Chiefs 27-24. to The Rams take down the 49ers 20-17. to The lineup is set. The big game. The Bengals will be playing the Rams where do you want to start talking about these games? Well, let's just start with the fact that the NFL is doing some good stuff. They are doing great work. I think they're doing really well this year. And, well, let's start with the first game. The Bengals-Chiefs, right. where the game was 21-3. to It was so The game was done. Like, we were going to head into halftime. Mm -hmm. We'll set the stage here. And the Chiefs were dominating, just dominating the Bengals. They, the Bengals could get nothing done on the offense. And then... A miraculous Samaj P. Ryan, the pain bot, comes through with a little 
screen pass and houses it, gets them on the board, but then the Chiefs are going to respond right before halftime. They have a guaranteed free three points as long as they don't get tackled before getting in the end zone. And Patrick Mahomes throws one of the stupidest, dumbest, yeah, absolutely. one of the stupidest throws I've ever seen him make of a almost lateral to Tyreek Hill who cannot get in and they run out of time. Well, and I believe Andy Reid was sending the kicking team out there and Mahomes said like give me another shot. So Oh, is that what I missed that part? And if that if that's what happened, imagine the Brutal. mental um massacre. You lost, you lost by 3. Yeah, the mental massacre of no, give us another shot and then you go out there why you would ever check that ball down. You throw it in and out of the end zone and kick a field goal or get a touchdown. Yes. Um, you know, obviously if Tyreek breaks a couple tackles, everyone's like, oh, what a great yeah, play. Yeah, but the process but, was still wrong. I don't mind going for the play there. I no, thought, I, I totally would have put yeah. Mahomes out there, but you've got to throw it you got to throw it to the end zone. Anyways, they didn't get it, and that was the momentum changer, and yes. the Chiefs never looked right the rest of the way. Tyreek Hill dominated the first half of that game. Yes, I don't, he did. I don't think he touched the ball in the second half. I mean, it was just complete. You know, and what's funny is this happened a couple weeks ago when the Chiefs and Bengals played. It was just like this, where the Chiefs were up and Joe Cool brought him back. I, it's not just Joe Cool. No, certainly not. Money Mac. Dude, yes, dude. What? It, what? That the the, the kicker on the Bengals. Uh, we need an ID check on this this young feller. I don't even know that he. I don't think he can drive yet. I don't know that he can drive yet. Or hear me out. Hear me out. Maybe he's wearing a mask and it's actually <laughs> Justin Tucker. Is Justin Tucker trying to, like, he just wants to go to the Super Bowl? Um, yeah, McPherson is unbelievable. Like he's, the, the fact that he is a rookie and doing these things, it is absolutely an incredible story. The Bengals, uh, I believe it was, was it the biggest comeback? It was tied for the biggest comeback in okay. championship history, AFC or NFC. Um, and the last one to do it was Peyton Manning's Colts, who went on to win the Super Bowl. So this will be interesting. And and now Joe Cool, Joe, uh, he's out there, Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. And I think he is about to be more divisive than, like, his persona, what he gives off. And I said this last week. I don't know if you listened to the shows while you oh, were off Oh, goodness gracious, no. Um, but I... Uh, I talked about how much I love love Joe Burrow. I love him. I like his personality. I like his confidence where he walks the right line of saying the right things, doing the right PR moves, but then also just when it's time to I think he likes to put on a show. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that like the whole the he was asked about the diamonds and if you if you read the quote it reads far more harsh where he, his response – he was asked about his, his huge necklace. They said, are those real? And he said, yeah, I mean, I'm, I make enough money that they need to be real. But you could – it was pretty tongue-in-cheek the way that he said it. I think that – I think it's an act and he is just – he's enjoying being a young man in his second year in the NFL it feels in the Super Bowl. It feels unfair. It is very unfair. Like, they shouldn't be there yet. No. I, I said, I truly believe Burrow is going to win multiple Super Bowls. I really believe that. I just, it was too soon. It's too too soon, too early in his career. On, yeah. on top of that, like, Burrow carried the Bengals. The play calling, in my opinion, for oh the my Bengals gosh! was infuriating, where we were on this Zach Taylor handbook of, if it's first down, you have to run the ball. This Why? is this is what the NFL says that you have to do. It's mandated. You're not allowed to throw. No, granted, of course, they had one first down, whereas it was a play action interception. But it was just like Joe Burrow and the team. They were put in such bad position because it wasn't. It was always second and nine. Second and eight. It wasn't run on first down, chunk away five yards and have a second and short. No, it was it was always second and long, then third and long. But incredible game by the Bengals, 49ers. Rams, it was pretty tight. Uh, a, there was a bit of a you know a lack of offense for a lot of the game. Cooper Cup of Coffee oh, just continues his sheer dominance, which is great because we're going to be talking about you know the truth about fantasy wide receivers and the truth about Cooper Cup is he 
was. Well, well, don't spoil okay. it. Okay, I won't. I will not spoil I mean, how people, good Cooper Cup was for the people. People are waiting we to hear don't know. What, what the truth about Cooper Cup was this season. Um, yeah, I mean, a couple of obviously egregious, horrific, unfathomable interception drops that would have yes, changed. Yes, on both sides of the, of the field. That that could have changed the, the outcome of that game. But the Rams, at home, take care of business, and now they go on the road. Tech, I don't know if you know this. They are oh, they're the road team? They are technically the road team for this year's Super Bowl, but they are also playing at home, so not really. Saw the stat of it took 54 years before uh, an NFL home team played uh, they played at home in the Super Bowl, and now it's happened back to back years. Pretty wild. Speaks well to because if these trends continue next year, wait, where is it next year? It's in Arizona. Oh, baby! <laughs> I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Uh, it was Jimmy Garoppolo was very, very bad in this game. He, I get it. They put up 17 points. One of those touchdowns was an just an unbelievable Debo Samuel screen that he took 40 or 50 yards. He missed George Kittle early for what looked like should have been a touchdown. The Where are you at with Garoppolo in San Francisco? Is it is it Trey Lance time next year, or is do you still think that there's a chance Jimmy returns? Uh, I, I think it's done. Um, there was an article that came out today about um, some of – what Jimmy Garoppolo was saying after the game, he was actually able to say, "Well, now I can now I can tell the truth." Um, oh, dude, I have not read this. Yeah, so this sounds juicy. Now he can tell the truth and uh, multiple things. One, he said his thumb was like he can't believe it made it through. Like it was just oh, yeah, barely we, we hanging were, on. Uh, Jimmy, we were watching. We saw. <laughs> we saw. Um, but then you know the fact that it's in it, it is in your mind in your head the fact that you're. One lull away from having the backup future yeah, quarterback I, coming in. That is hard to play through. And so while I really do enjoy making fun of Jimmy Garoppolo's play, sure, I also absolutely 100% commend the man. I mean, that is tough. You, they traded the world to go get your replacement, and you buckled down and took that team to an inch away from the Super Bowl. It was... It was great work, but I think he's done here. Um, I think San Francisco will move on, and his play has now made him someone that will – he will be – you know, you're you're the you're the Panthers, you're the Broncos. Obviously, you'd rather have uh, Aaron Rodgers, but if you can't get them, Jimmy Garoppolo is absolutely worth going and getting. Now, for fantasy purposes, I've talked about this, this, uh, this whole, like, early into the offseason for fantasy – I will not be duped by the hype and hope of a new quarterback coming into one of these locations unless they are an Aaron Rodgers type. It, I, Russ, does that count Russ? That counts Russ, and it even counts – I because this is my line. The bottom of that line is Kirk okay. Cousins. Okay. Kirk Cousins counts. Jimmy Garoppolo does not count. Jimmy Garoppolo goes to Carolina. I'm not going to be like, oh, DJ Moore, he's going to finally have a competent quarterback. Not going to happen because as good as DJ Moore is, they can tackle him unlike Debo Samuel. Right. You can't tackle that man. Jimmy Garoppolo carries a cap hit of nearly $27 million, but he can be cut for $1.4 million. That will be very interesting to see if they're able to pull off another uh, Alex Smith type of a trade. What I think they got like two twos. For Alex Smith, they'll but, definitely get something for Jimmy. So G. it would, but I'm saying, can they with that money? Yeah. Or yeah, they can because they okay. I, I think wh whoever trades for him will restructure, sign a new deal, spread that out a little bit. I mean, you look at Kirk Cousins right now; he's he's on the cap for like forty million or something. So I, I think they'll get something for Jimmy G, and if not, he'll sign in free agency. News and notes from around the league. All right, Tom Brady. Oh, man. To be or not to be, that is the question. Adam Schefter just smashing the door open a few days ago, tweeting out that, uh, that Adam Schefter and Jeff Darlington are reporting Tom Brady is retiring this thing. Of course, you know, instantly viral it is. 
immediately everywhere. But then we start getting some pushback, including Tom Brady's agent, who has said that the decision has not yet been made. Uh, Ian Rappaport tweeted, he think you know he's saying Brady will retire, but there there's some pushback because of the timing. I would. I mean, it, this is a tough situation because number one, uh, Tom Brady, I think clearly respects the game of football, For sure. and he he's like, I'm out. The Bengals, the Rams, they're going to the Super Bowl. Let's make the Super Bowl about them. And then, as soon as that game is done, then I can steal all the headlines and I can just be Tom Brady for a month. Uh, unfortunately, the news got out there. So, how are you? How are you feeling about this? Well, uh, any any chance he doesn't retire? I, there's enough chance that is he I'm, a spiteful enough man? <laughs> no, I I I think that you know, even if he does retire, I'm not dropping him in a dynasty league yet. You know that itch or any okay. kind of um, any kind of hope to come back. I, I would hold him for a little while to see if maybe injuries or something going into next season would happen. We're recording this um, the afternoon before it releases. A few hours from now is Tom Brady's live show on Sirius XM. And I think that there's a good chance he comes out and officially establishes it himself. Um, so maybe, maybe last night um, he did come out and officially retire. But I do think he's retiring um, it was shocking, and honestly, I was really, really surprised because we all know it's going to happen at some point. I was really surprised how like sad I was. Right. I was like, I was like, whoa, that wait, no more Tom Brady. That is that because you had Tom Brady as your Dino QB one? No, but I've got you know Godwin <laughs> and Mike Evans a couple of places. It certainly factors into it. The selfishness definitely factors into. Um, fantasy goodness from Tom Brady, fantasy goodness from his receivers. Um, but also, I don't, I don't know football without Tom Brady. Like I was never right. I wasn't a football fan twenty five years ago when the NFL didn't have Tom Brady, um, or at least not serious enough to to care. So it's just going to be wild to not have him a part of the NFL. We'll be talking about Mike Evans and Chris Godwin a little bit later in the truth. We'll we'll do, jump into some dino value of them, but that. If if it is true, which I'm assuming Tom Brady, I'm, I think it's true that he's going to retire. What in the world happens there? Uh, Tampa Bay, you got your Super Bowl, but I can tell you as a team that had uh, Bruce Arians as our head coach, when Bruce thing knows that things are going to go south, Bruce, Ari Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Arians, he will also retire <laughs> at I, the drop of a hat. I think he's going to give it one more year. But I, I think and I like, will be shocked. Like I will be blown away if he's here two years from now. And like Leonard Fournette, where it, it felt like holy crap, dynasty value from the garbage up to he's probably a top fifteen guy right now because he's gonna re he'll likely resign. But even if, now, if he does, yeah, what's his value? It's gonna be my favorite crazy. landing spot for Brees Hall yes. was Tampa because he is it he still could, no, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> <laughs> because without Tom Brady, that offense is not going to be clicking. I like Kyle Trask. I I liked the college tape of Kyle Trask, but he's a non first round NFL rookie right. pick this last year. Like he's he's not expected to be anything great, and certainly not someone I would bank on for um, the fantasy value of ancillary weapons. The Giants have named former Bills offensive coordinator Brian Dable as their new head coach. I think it's a good hire. The Raiders. Hired Patriots OC Josh McDaniels. Now, this one is interesting. Um, we weren't sure when, if Josh McDaniels would take the leap again after a, a bit of a debacle in the Denver Broncos. And then after that, the Patriots were still willing to take him back. It will be fascinating to see how he, how he does for the Las Vegas Raiders. More coaching news. Everything is still kind of shifting as the landscape has not fully settled we do a uh, coaching changes show that's sometime at the beginning of march i know that uh flores brian flores was interviewing with the texans very soon it, like by the time this you hear this maybe something has happened uh not sure and that will be fascinating to watch 
what happens then with uh, Deshaun Watson as well. Yeah, we'll break into how that's going to affect the fantasy outlooks of all these teams because these are massive changes. When you bring in a coach, you go from a defensive guy to an offensive guy or vice versa. Um, they have they have major impacts. You know what I didn't realize until just now is that McDaniels will be going back to the division yes, where he, he will. failed so hard yes. at. Um, but they also they, they brought in his – best friend from the Patriots uh, to run as the GM. So at least we know that there's going to be um, some congruent thought from Mc the top down there. McDaniels at least gave us Tebow time. That's was that Mc <laughs> that was McDaniels. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Where he like, so he won playoff games kind of got duped, but the, the story goes that he was uh, led to believe by Belichick that Tim Tebow was going to be a, uh, hot draft pick and I, I don't know i don't know if it's true or not it's just that's a fun story to tell uh i think that does it for the news you got anything else that i didn't we didn't cover yet no we'll get into so much more news here on the next episode i'm sure we'll have more coaching information you want answers i think i'm entitled you want answers i want the truth you can't handle the truth I haven't said hello to the cardboard bear extraordinaire, Jay Grizz, but he's holding it down over there, uh, doing great work. Yeah, I mean he's uh, he is as steady as they come. Yeah, don't move. He, yeah. he doesn't. He's move. just a real still presence. Never for flinches. Our studio. All right, up on the the way. <laughs> yeah, you can't make him flinch. No, there's nothing. Uh, up on the art uh, the uh, the website right now, a uh, twenty five wide receiver statistics from Aaron Larson. These are really fun articles. I encourage you go check it out. The fantasyfootballers dot com. This is a fascinating group of wide receivers because the truth we talk about last year, we prognosticate a little bit into next year, but a lot of these guys in this list have massive, massive variables that could go. Either way of uh, continue their dominance or like what the what the heck do you do with with Justin Jefferson if Kirk Cousins does in fact leave and it's just they tear this thing down to the nubs and you have a rookie QB not that Jefferson goes to nothing but it's can, Adams does he thing. maintain maintain being a top five guy so let's get into it we alluded to it at the top of the show Coop a cup of coffee. Mm. Holy crap. Um, he was very good. 59% uh, of the time. 59% of the time he was great. 94% of his games were at least good or better. He had one finish. One finish outside the top 24. Yeah, I, I, and you know, and in that game, you know, it was like nine half PPR fantasy points. So it wasn't. He didn't crush you. It wasn't a bust. And he was, I mean, he was so good. Look, the consistency metrics on him, he was the most consistent wide receiver. No no surprise. But if you look at just the first half of the year, he was the most consistent in the first half. But in the mm -hmm, second half, true. he was also the most consistent. He was as rock solid as it comes. And then, I don't know if you have followed, in the playoffs, I have. He's been very good. He has been very good. He is the fourth wide receiver ever to win the Triple Crown, which means most receptions, most yards, most touchdowns, joining Jerry Rice, Sterling Sharp, and Steve Smith. His splits against top defenses, against bottom defenses, it's within a fraction of a point. His home, his road splits, within an even smaller fraction. Like He was just so outrageously good. That if you took away all of his touchdowns, all uh, all, 16 all sixteen of yes, his touchdowns, all sixteen of of his touchdowns, he would still be the wide receiver five because what? <laughs> because he finished the season with one hundred forty five catches, nearly two thousand yards. So I I put out a tweet, uh, you know, several weeks ago about he is my clear number one next year. He like Cooper Cup is the number one wide receiver, and I was blown away by the amount of people that thought I was crazy or that that was hot take. He just had the best wide receiver season of the modern era. Like, you know, it, I don't know. Maybe Jerry Rice had a couple better seasons, but... It's the, he had the best... 
uh, best season in the history of our truth metrics. Yes. I mean, he was unbelievable, and it's the connection with Matthew Stafford that gets that done. Matthew Stafford's not going anywhere. Cooper Cup's not going anywhere. He will be my number one pick next year at the wide receiver position. I, I don't blame you. He, As we go through these names, you'll see it, that his – his situation next year is status quo. I mean, you could – oh, Robert Woods is coming right. back. Like, come on, so what? He was fantastic when Robert Woods was on the field. Yes, he was. Like, does, oh, but they didn't have Beckham there. Does Beckham come back? I don't know, and I don't, Ooh, I so don't care. Who cares? Yeah, I don't care for Cooper Cup. Matthew Stafford has these connections with wide receivers, and they are the go-to guys. 191 targets. I just I, – I don't blame you. For a Cooper Cup being your number one guy, I don't. I mean, I'm probably there because I'm just off the top of the the dome here. But he's he was so fantastic and so consistent. Boom games just never hurt you. Number two, Debo Samuel from the San Francisco 49ers. Forty four percent of his games were great. Eighty eight percent of his games were good. A bust rate of only six percent. Finished with 121 targets, 77 for 1405 and six. Holy crap! But that is uh, also supplemented by 365 yards on the ground and eight rushing touchdowns. Eight ru Well, that's because you can't tackle Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel was so good that he missed a game in Week 13 and outscored Michael Thomas's unbelievable, you know, season a couple years ago, which was the standard for best fantasy. Seasons, which, by the way, that's why Cooper Cup um, beat Debo. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, going forward, I I don't think Debo's great because okay, Trey Lance is going to come. That's we're already at a question mark. But I don't think it really is a question mark because Shanahan has shown that he builds game plans around Debo Samuel, whether it's getting him the ball on the ground, f manufacturing plays to him, screen plays. Um, and we, we've we seen Lance in limited action be willing to take deep shots um, right. down the field. So Debo Samuel, I I think the only thing that stops Debo Samuel's injury, which he has a uh, large and lengthy history of, but he got through this whole season. I'm, I'm completely in on Debo, and I'm so sorry that I was ever out because <laughs> he uh. is he's really a weird guy to watch. You don't understand why – People can't. Sure. Like when Derrick Henry runs, you know, people have a hard time tackling Derrick Henry. I get it. Yeah. He's like this train that's just plowing down. Debo always looks like, oh, yeah, this guy's not. No, that guy's got him. Wait, why Why can't they like literally he takes a dive into Crisco and comes out and he's just unstoppable. Now you're a mile, Thank you. Mile, 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 mile. He now, did. He did beat up a little bit on bottom 16 defenses uh, was much better against them uh i think that the aside from the trey lance question the rushing touchdowns are a big question because san francisco i believe will do something at the at the running back position because it won't just be elijah mitchell and debo i don't think that's very thin right that's like that's yeah. that's a situation of putting your team over leveraging what Debo Samuel has to do for your team. And I mean, Trey Sermon, perhaps he, Trey Sermon could just be a full bust. Not exactly sure. Maybe he just needed another, uh, needed a year of learning, a year of experience to get acclimated. Maybe they bring back Raheem Mostert. There's a lot of things that the, the 49ers could do that could hurt Debo Samuel from trying to repeat a season like this, but he's very solid. At number three, Devontae Adams, now a little bit, you know, not as uh, the first half not as consistent as you normally hope for our, uh, from Devontae Adams. He was number 10 in consistency over the first half. Finishes the year 123 for 1,500 yards and 11 touchdowns. 38% of his games were great. 63% were good. The question for him, well, like, what happens? Because he is a he is a free agent, but I can't imagine that the Packers let him go without. They're not just going to take the the, uh, the 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 supplementary third round pick for Devontae Adams to be good. No, they're going to franchise him 
and hope that they can figure something out. Is Aaron Rodgers a Green Bay Packer? Let's let's start there. Where are you at? Where's your temperature at for Rodgers returning to Green Bay? I, I think it is a 33% chance he returns to Green Bay. I don't okay. think everything is uh, hunky-dory and happy over there. Um, the, the way that they structured the contract – and got him back on the field this last year was under the premise that they will trade him this off season. Their cap situation says that they kind of need to. He's at the age where if you're not going to extend him a long-term deal, which they didn't this last year, um, then you need to get something for him, and, and they'll get a lot for him. Um, Andrew Brandt, former Green Bay Packers general manager, he seems confident that Aaron Rodgers will be gone. Um so I, I, I lean that direction for sure. I, I think he will will move on. And he has said, like, or at least it's reported that he said um, he wants to bring Devontae Adams with him. And. And. Yes. MVS. And. And MVS. What is that all about? Yeah. You can't complain. You cannot complain that you're not getting the weapons you need and then be like, but wherever I go, I want the exact <laughs> same weapons. Like. You can't have it both ways, Aaron. That was that was surprising. Um, so with Devontae Adams, if he has Aaron Rodgers and they're all Packers next year, then if you want to take Devontae Adams number one, I'm happy. I would take Cup. Okay. I would take Devontae Adams too. I would take him ahead of Debo, ahead of Tyreek, ahead of everyone else we're about to talk talk about. But under the under the idea that he leaves and Devontae Adams is franchised, um, then I would say Devontae Adams is still in a good situation where he is the dude. He's not going to get Aaron Rodgers numbers. He's not going to get double-digit touchdowns. But I still think he'll be a top 15 wide receiver. Okay, so we'll use that to transition to this next guy and start with uh, – not start with, but the question of Devontae Adams with no Rodgers or Justin Jefferson with no Kirk Cousins. Justin Jefferson – Number four, finishes the year 108, 1,600 receiving yards, 10 receiving touchdowns. Only 18% of his games were great, but 71% were good. He was very consistent. Uh, you know, Just a, a couple games here or there where he let your team down, led the NFL with over 2,000 air yards, most third-down targets and receptions. He was, yet again, the go-to guy for Kirk Cousins. He in fact he has the most receiving yards ever for a wide receiver in their first two years. It will be it'll be fun to see if Jamar Chase can give Jefferson a run for the money on that or not. But where are you at with Justin Jefferson uh just moving into the future? Obviously if Kirk Cousins is there, he deserves to be in the conversation of that that, you know, top three pick. Um he's been as great as anyone in the history of the NFL coming into the league, uh, he's always open. I mean, he's one of those he guys. He is, that, yeah. It's ridiculous. Uh, you double cover him, and then all of a sudden you're like, wait, did you guys, you guys didn't guard Justin Jefferson? And you go watch the beginning of the play, and it's like, oh no, you were totally watching Justin Jefferson. He just made you look that way, and then smoke bombed and was somewhere <laughs> else. So I, I like him. If both of these guys, Adams and Jefferson, lose their quarterback, I am taking Justin Jefferson for sure okay. over Devontae Adams. Um, simply because Devontae, Devontae Adams has obviously been a touchdown machine um, over the last couple of years. I think that will come down a lot. And then the age. Devontae Adams, I'm I, I'm not saying he's going to fall off at all, but he will turn 30 next year. Um, so if he's without Aaron Rodgers working with a new quarterback versus Justin Jefferson, who is still possibly ascending um, as a talent, I, I, would, I would tie break that way. But assuming that the quarterback situations don't change for these teams. Justin Jefferson is. Would you rather have Justin Jefferson next year or Tyreek Hill? Ooh. With Kirk Cousins back, I'm taking Jefferson. I, the, the, we'll talk about Tyreek Hill in, in a little bit, but like, it was so bizarre. The back half of the year was so bizarre. It was the, a lot like the back half of the playoff game. Yes, it was. Yeah, where teams just they defenses are starting. You can't stop Patrick Mahomes, but teams are starting to get to the point where they can make an 
an adjustment here or there that works out at least for a little bit. At number five, rookie sensation Jamar Chase. Uh, he was he his consistency rank was only number thirteen because after coming out uh, to start the year just full nuclear, it slowed down over the second half. It was propped up uh, here and there by some big games, including the number one overall finish in championship week in week 17. But so consistency rank of 13 finishes as the wide receiver five. And we will just, we'll combo that with T Higgins here because there's, it's an interesting discussion to talk about both of them. Higgins finished as the wide receiver 22 and consistency rank of 22. Both had their games in the sun. It was not very often that they overlapped Right. The second half of the year was like T. Higgins time. Right. You know, I remember people, at the, you know, the halfway point, like, do you drop T. Higgins? Um, and Cause, then because Higgins started the season bad. Yeah. And then Higgins was great uh, at the second half of the season where Chase let people down most of those weeks until the nuclear playoff weeks. Um, and so you, there is a question of can they both do it at the same time? And I think they absolutely can going forward. Burrow going into year three, being fully removed from the beginning of the year where he was dealing with the knee injury. Um, I, I was thinking about this. The comp to me for these two guys is the 2008 Larry Fitzgerald and Quan Bolden. Okay. And Quan Bolden was the reliable third down guy, like the uh, you know the possession receiver. He finished that year as the wide receiver seven. He was not the flashy guy, though. No, no, the big play guy, the playmaker was Larry Fitzgerald. Um, who finished that year as the wide receiver one. And so I think this, you know, look, they got to the Super Bowl. They're not going to come out next year and be more run heavy and less dependent on Burrow. They are going to continue the transition to it being Burrow's team and not that they will abandon the run by any means, but when they allow him to throw the ball five, ten more times a game, I think Jamar Chase and T. Higgins are both going to be great. Higgins will probably be the better value in drafts. That would be interesting, yeah. You know, I I could easily see both of these guys being top 12 wide receivers next year. Their target share was very close. We're talking 23.9 to 23.7. Higgins just edging out Jamar Chase. But Chase, you know, it's the second most fantasy points by a rookie wide receiver behind only Randy Moss. Third most 20-plus yard targets. <laughs> I mean, he he's not 22. Jamar Chase is not 22 years old. He can barely drink. And this is what he has done on a professional football field. And the stupid thing is, <laughs> like, kind of like Debo, where you just feel like, I, I don't understand it. Like, with him, you get these little screen passes or just, you better not miss a step, man. You just can't miss a step with Chase because any play – there's all right. these plays where he catches the ball, either a screen or maybe it's just 10 yards, 12, 15 yards across the middle, and there's guys around him. He's not wide open. It's not like Justin Jefferson where he's just out there in no man's land and he he just disappeared. But if you don't get him immediately, those jets, I mean, he's gone. He's just so fast. Speaking of fast, the number six wide receiver on the year was Tyreek Hill. With a consistency rank of 25. Oh, 29% of his games were great. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's, a, yeah. that's a good number. That's what I want. But he busted 41% of the time, including a stretch run from weeks 13 through 18, where he was a top 40, a top 40 wide receiver once. Now he was number two on the week against the Los Angeles Chargers in week 15. But other than that, during that run, he I mean, he went full Beastie Boys and sabotaged your team. It was it was horrific. Um you're so talking about you, on the season. What do you make of it? Cuz wasn't he like the most consistent What was his consistency last year? So here's I thought it was great. Yeah, it was I remember it, right. It was pretty good last year. The year prior, if I'm if I'm remembering this right, was bad. Um he he was one of those guys where um you've got a lot of variance because he's always oh, been yeah, a Yeah, we got it. It's, you, thank you Kyle, Kyle points it out. Tyreek was the number 2 wide receiver last year on the year, but number 1, 
Inconsistency. Yeah, and but the year prior, yeah, he was bad at consistency because he hasn't been a volume guy. This super weird thing that I can't wrap my head around that makes no sense whatsoever is that his previous career high was 87 receptions. And this year he had 111. He yeah. dominated. Far more consistent this year, right? What? How does that make any <laughs> sense? It's it, it, like I can't wrap my head around how he was more targeted, more receptions, and so much less consistent. Um, the second half of the year would just have destroyed you. So, and you saw it in the playoff game. You see these little disappearing stretches. And Pringle and McCole Hardman, they're stepping up a little bit more. But Kelsey's getting older. So what is the truth about Tyree Kill? Should we be in on him and just assume, look, that's a bad stretch. He's had bad stretches before. But like last year, he was the most consistent, an absolute dominator. He's got Patrick Mahomes. He's currently only 27 years old. He's not lost speed or talent. So what is the truth about Tyreek Hill? The name I want to comp since we're of the of the guys we've already talked about next year, Debo or Tyreek Hill. That I think that is a very fair conversation to have and I'm not sure. I think I think at this point I would probably go Tyreek Hill because I'll just I'll let the tiebreaker be uh, betting on the quarterback where as much as I'm very excited to watch Trey Lance play football and be a fantasy football quarterback he'll still essentially be a rookie quarterback out there so I will I'll let Mahomes break that tie for me but it's uh, I don't feel a strong strong conviction about that where are you at if you're staring it down Tyree Kill or Debo I'm the exact same it, it's really hard and it will feel stupid if he ends up kind of doing what he did at the end of this year. Um, early in the season, people were counting out the Chiefs a little bit, saying they had been figured out. Their they offense had, was sputtering. Because they had. Right. But then they fixed that part of yes, it. They, they did. really did. And I, I'm going to trust Andy Reid. I'm going to trust Patrick Mahomes. You know what's interesting, though? Let me let me pull up their game logs to make sure I am quoting this right. But, like, in that – in that group or of games where it feels like it felt like they had been figured out, Tyreek Hill was still thriving for fantasy purposes because it was right in the middle of the, of the season, and Tyreek Hill, you know, through week eleven, from from games like f week four through week eleven, he was solid. He wasn't elite, elite Tyreek Hill, but there's only like one terrible game in there, and then they figured things out after the bye week where they're scoring 30-plus points a game, the Kansas City Chiefs, and yet mm -hmm. Tyreek Hill was not part of that production except for the one game. Yeah, and, it, and so that's where you question. Very bizarre. Are they, are they saying, okay, defenses are locking in on Hill, we're going to go elsewhere, and they were fine doing that? I mean, because the here's the downside. Let's say you take Tyreek over Debo. The downside, from the last seven weeks of the year, Guess where Tyreek was wide receiver what? Over the last seven weeks? Yeah, that's almost almost half the season. That you know, I mean, he had to have been outside the top 12. He was wide receiver 45. Oh, what? During that oh, stretch. Oh, no. He was bad. He was literally – he had one awesome game, and the rest were all duds. And so there, there feels like there's risk there. And when I <laughs> – here's what's so funny. So this is how fickle we are. I'm watching this game this last weekend, and Tyreek has let all the Tyreek managers down. They all felt it. Uh -huh. If you had him, yeah, yeah, yeah. you were like, oh, man, you're, you're maybe a little bit more worried. And when I watched the first half of that playoff game, I thought to myself, I'm going to go trade for Tyreek in any dynasty league I can because the dude still has it. He's still got Mahomes, and the managers are going to have felt that wide receiver 45 type of finish, Sure, and maybe I can actually acquire Tyreek Hill because you usually can't. You can't just go out and get one of those top three type of dynasty wide receivers. Um, and then the second half happened, and I go, uh, I don't know. Should, should, <laughs> I, should, should I acquire him? But again, usually that's when you should. Yeah, 27 years old, still fast, still great. Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes. I'm still in on Tyreek Hill. Number seven wide receiver on the year was Stephon Diggs. This year for Stephon Diggs, very strange. 
very strange. So let, let's work through this together of how to truly feel about his his season. Because let's let's go. We'll play the game, Jason. Stephon Diggs had a what year for fantasy football? I would say Stephon Diggs had a good year for fantasy good. football. Good, okay. But that's because. I How many teams did you have Stephon Diggs on? I had him in zero. <laughs> if you drafted <laughs> Stephon Diggs, you feel like he had a horrific year because he was not what you hoped. Like, it's all a matter of. He was the third wide receiver off the board. It's all a matter of draft capital, right? If he had gone where he went last year in drafts, you know, if you, if you, if you were getting him in the fifth round and he did right. what he did, you'd be like, league winner. But obviously, you had to pay up for him this year. And even though he had the same. I think it was within one target of his numbers the previous season. Um, you know, it was, yeah, he had 165 targets this year, 166 last year. Still was a top 10 wide receiver, but he just didn't have the big monster blow up dominating games. Um, I don't think you should be disappointed. And I, I know that the two producers back there right now, Kyle and Brooks, I think they hate Stephon Diggs. I think that they are so mad at Stephon Diggs, and they are so disappointed. Are, am I correct that you guys are very down on his season? So mad. <laughs> okay, that's Kyle Brooks. <laughs> yeah, pretty mad. Yeah, and and I don't I don't think you should be. I don't. I I mean, Jason's going to tell you how you're supposed to feel. the The truth is, the rest of your roster is what really let you down. <laughs> I mean, All right, here, let me give you some numbers. 100 receptions, 1,200 yards, 10 touchdowns, pretty consistent. He just didn't have the monstrous blow-up games. Yeah, so some numbers to highlight that. This year, he had 6% of his games were great. Last year, 31%. This year, 53% of his games were good. Last year, 81%. Like, he was – not only was he rock solid, but he also gave you some boom games – uh, of his 165 targets that you talked about, though, uh, only 118 were deemed catchable, which that's not great. Uh, Stop so, throwing the ball away towards Diggs. So there was a there was a, a bit of a disconnect there between Diggs and Josh Allen compared to last year. So okay, Jason, you're on the side of Stephon Diggs had a good fantasy football season. Are you drafting him? Let's go through the. Okay, I won't start at Cooper Cup. Diggs or Debo? Debo. Devontae Adams with no De Adams. Aaron. Oh, oh, oh. Say that, say with that no again. no Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I would take Stephon Diggs for sure. Jefferson with Kirk Cousins. Jefferson. And That's why you follow up and say Jefferson without <laughs> Kirk Cousins. <laughs> no, this is my game okay, and I will you, run it how you, I see fit. This is your show. Jamar Chase. Oh, Chase for sure. And Tyreek? That's the question. So I was gonna, I was gonna put this back to the producers. Tyreek Hill scored more fantasy points than Stephon Diggs did this year. Who would you have rather had this season, Tyreek Hill or Stephon Diggs? You had the, you know, it's like if you're just disappointed that Stephon Diggs didn't have the great games. Well, Tyreek Hill, a third of his games were great. So would you have rather have had a Tyreek Hill than than a Stephon Diggs this last year? For me, Hill was too – he had too much bust in the second half. Yeah, exactly. I would so, go for Diggs in that case. That's my point is, like, I don't think people should be disappointed in Diggs because if you score that exact – I mean, they almost had the same amount of fantasy points. So it's either – you got to – it's user choice. You you know, it's like when you do that roster construction, you, you make a character and you have a certain amount of points to put sure, in different yeah, categories yeah. you have that many fantasy points you can divvy them up to the games however you see fit I think in the end you would probably divvy it up like Stefan Diggs had and not like Tyreek had where it was all really good games and really bad games it was consistent just I win would, you weeks by himself I would divvy them up all into the first six weeks and then trade him <laughs> that's that's genius <laughs> that's great all right at number eight Mike Evans just Mike Evans, he just he just keeps getting it done. No you matter, I, like I mean, the Mike Evans conversations are so strange because the man has never he has never fallen under a thousand receiving yards for a season. This year, seventy four, a thousand thirty five. He just made it, but fourteen, fourteen 
receiving touchdowns. He had a consistency rake. He was number eight, which that lines up. He was the fantasy uh, wide receiver number eight. 25% great, 63% good. And we will combo him. Let's talk about Chris Godwin, who in 14 games, 98 for 1,105, finished as the wide receiver 17, missed you know three games there at the end with the unfortunate torn ACL, was consistently uh, was the consistency rank of number 12. How do we feel about these guys? How do you feel about their season? So the truth, uh, where you also then factoring in next year. Yeah, the truth backwards. The truth of twenty twenty one. There was you go. That the they truth were, backwards uh, was that they were very very good. They were consistent, especially you know it looked like it was going to be a three headed monster with Antonio Brown, but the injury and shenanigans kept him <laughs> off the field, <laughs> as they say. Um, I, the I, I think shenanigans. I think they were very very good. Um, going forward it's a completely new world and i believe you and i are going to disagree on mike evans chris godwin we can't yeah. even really talk about because we don't know where he's going to play I, football i think he's gone yeah i, I would agree now, their cap if, situation's bad if they don't brady's have brady. gone i think godwin will be gone yeah and so um that's one of those where we couldn't prognosticate a future for godwin but we can for mike evans assuming chris godwin is not back and brady is not back You've got him all alone. You've got him to where he could have 150 plus targets. Um, you know, this year he only had 114 targets. He's only 28 years old, but he's 28 going on 45. It feels like he's just <laughs> yes. been in the league forever. And so it's a question of: Do you believe the talent of Mike Evans and the target market share that he'll have will overcome a bad quarterback, or do you think 28 year old Mike Evans just barely squeaking in the thousand with Brady? Now getting a downgrade at quarterback is probably going to be not a great fantasy asset. That's where I lean right now. I think that Mike Evans, who he, I think he threw it out there, he's 28 years old. He's is he really under contract for four more years? Yes. What? What did this? What contract did this man sign? That agent is awesome. Well, I hope he got enough up front that it is not whatever. It still compares. I think if Mike Evans is the only show in town and you have it's Kyle Trask, I think you're seeing more than 150 targets. I think you're talking about the 160 plus where in I guess we're in 17 games now, so maybe even 170 where the offense will have to go through Mike Evans. They are going Gronk is going to be gone. Uh OJ Howard is he was on his fifth year option, right? So I'm just kind of th – He's so, out. Yeah, he's Yeah, gone. so, like, is he back? I do not know. Chris Godwin, likely gone. Antonio Bray, Brown? Super not, old. It's Antonio like, Brown gone. Yeah, it's it's Evans. It is just him. And while I prefer to have a Hall of Fame quarterback throwing it to my fantasy wide receiver, I think that Mike Evans, he's going to be very interesting to watch because he will – he's – had this thing where he just he has tumbled where there's almost a name fatigue with Mike Evans and you want to get excited about oh Chris Godwin he's the new hotness Chris Godwin's an excellent wide receiver but a thousand yards every single year and a player who's if he's in the right situation can easily surpass 10 plus touchdowns so the the question is just where are you feeling about him like are you feeling him still in the top 10 no, or no. outside? Definitely outside. I, you say 10-plus touchdowns. I, he obviously has the ability to do that, but you've got to have a quarterback that can do that. And if you look here at the quarterbacks we've talked about, right? I mean, you Tom Brady for is these James guys. Is James Winston a good quarterback? James Winston is a great fantasy quarterback. You would throw is pick he, sixes. Is he a good quarterback? Well, I, I think he is – a, a, yeah, I mean, he was a number one draft pick overall. I would say Jameis Winston is a good quarterback. Not a great NFL quarterback, but he can certainly – I mean, he had 5,000 yards. Yeah, he's a good quarterback. He had 30, okay. 30 interceptions, but that's what helped him <laughs> throw for 5,000 yards. But think about the, the wide receivers we've talked about here so far. You had Tom Brady. You have uh, – thrown to these guys. You have uh, Josh Allen mm -hmm. throwing to Diggs. You got Patrick Mahomes, you got uh, Joe Burrow, 
uh, you've got Aaron Rodgers, Matthew. Like th- they've all got good and quarterbacks Jimmy other than Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> but that, but again, that's what gives me confidence at Debo. It's like you just can't tackle him. It, it, <laughs> because, it's not Jimmy Garoppolo because the play is Debo. Do something. Yeah, <laughs> Debo. Now the the light switch on the wall. <laughs> Quick, hit it. All right. Uh, number nine was Deontay Johnson, who this is a this is a massive wild card. Big Ben did retire. He will not be coming back. As of right now, Deontay Johnson's quarterback is Mason Rudolph. Maybe Dwayne Haskins. Will, I don't know, but it, it could be somebody else. But right now, uh, at the time of this recording, it's Mason Rudolph. What? What do you make of Deontay Johnson? Who seventy five percent of his games were good. He never had any explosive games, but we understand that because Big Ben could not produce an explosive game anymore. His splits were fantastic. They're like there's no outliers where you go, oh well, he just smashed home games against bad defenses. But where? How are you feeling about Deontay Johnson? Who I I think when I think his rookie year. That was the Mason Rudolph year, and he led the team in receptions, if I'm remembering that correctly. I'll vet that while yeah, you talk. Yeah, vet that while I talk. I, I will say this. Deontay Johnson, for you producers back there, he is Stephon Diggs, just not drafted as high. Like, he did the same thing. He was cons- Where you drafted Deontay Johnson, you're like, oh, Deontay Johnson was great. I loved having him. It pretty much had the same thing. It just didn't cost as much. Deontay Johnson, I don't believe, can be extremely relevant without Big Ben. Um, they're not going to allow a non-Big Ben quarterback unless, obviously, they're bringing in a Rodgers. They're not going to allow him to throw the ball anywhere near the same rate as they were allowing Big Ben to throw the ball. And then you have Ben, who has quite the history of really hyper-targeting his number one. You know, he's got Antonio Brown. He's just going to keep going there, and that's what he did with Deontay Johnson, 170 targets. So you have a smaller passing total and then probably less of a uh, inclination to only force feed one guy and I think Deontay Johnson's good but he is not someone I think that's going to have a great fantasy season with a Mason Rudolph so rookie year Deontay Johnson he did lead the team with 59 receptions second was Jalen Samuels at 47 that was the Mason Rudolph year that was the Mason Rudolph yes uh now, but again, 59 receptions. So you could say yeah. he led the team, but 90, who cares? 92 targets is nice. Wish that turned into more. Like a guy like Deontay who's getting 92 targets, that should be. Yeah, but they were Mason Rudolph targets. Right. So that'll be a big question mark. That The whole Pittsburgh situation is very up in the air of. Have you heard? Like. Do you have any rumors from the bushes of a quarterback going there? No, or just no. just Mason Rudolph. Just I mean, sadness. It really is <laughs> everything at least out of out of Pittsburgh that you know that I've seen or read has all been that they're going to go forward with Mason Rudolph and Dwayne Haskins. Please, maybe look Pittsburgh, in the draft. Please don't. They don't said, do that. I remember, and this is probably why two years ago or whenever it was, a uh, year and a half ago, you said you think Aaron Rodgers was going to go to Pittsburgh yes. because they said they have a plan, right? Didn't they say that? They said, like, we have a plan for after Big Ben. If your plan <laughs> was Mason Rudolph, they have then you plan. have a bad plan. No, they have a plan to rebuild. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Mason – Rudolph is the worst, is <laughs> the worst in every conceivable way, not just football. I just, oh, man, that guy, I can't look at him without getting the heebie-jeebies. Okay, your, your radar? My radar off. just goes, I don't like that guy. <laughs> I mean, you see his smug little face? Just, oh, yeah. And I say little face because I've seen him next to Big Ben, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Real fills that <laughs> of helmet. Of course, he's got a lot of helmet to fill. Uh, Pittsburgh, please. Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, Najee Harris. This is that's a trifecta of fantasy goodness that needs to thrive. And the oh, and the Muth. Oh, oh the no, Muth. it's gonna be so tight. 
Luth, Mason yeah. Rudolph. How does a muth get Luth when it's Mason Rudolph? I wanted to find like a Ruth doll. Oh, there's got to be something between a, you know, a Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and, okay. and a muth. All right, we got so we, we're gonna but yeah, put that put, in the workshop. We'll get to that we'll later, Foot Clan. We're we're gonna we're gonna dive deep on that. All right, let's close out the show with these two wide receivers: Mike Williams, Keenan Allen of the Los Angeles Chargers. Mike Williams, somehow <laughs> is he really number ten? Yeah, somehow finishes the season as the number ten wide receiver, with forty four percent of his games being a bust. <laughs> but the beginning of that season was just so magical. And created such disappointment for the rest of it, as you saw what he could possibly be. Finishes the year with 129 targets, 76 for 11, 46, and 9, which still a tremendous return on fantasy draft position because he was in the 11th round, the wide receiver 48, even with dealing with all of those games. You had to have been super stoked that you drafted him. And then Keenan Allen... Just doing his thing, man. Wide receiver 14, but a consistency rank of seven. Really turned it on in the second half. It felt like he was always just short, though. Just short, and that is measured in his metrics of 0% of his games were great. 0%. You didn't get that explosive game. He only busted 19% of the time, but he was good 69% of the time. He is Keenan Allen. Nice. He's fantastic. Thank you. So what do you make of these two guys moving forward? I guess Mike Williams, we don't even know if he's going to be on the team. I, I, do we hope he leaves so that Keenan Allen can be elite no, again? No, I don't I don't think so. I think you I think you want the offense to continue to grow, and I think you want Mike Williams back. Um he'll test the free agent market, but I I'll I'll bet Mike Williams comes back. He could back. get franchised. Um yeah, I mean uh, the the inconsistency of Mike Williams was devastating. This was, if you remember back in the day, uh, you know, the first month of the season, and this was like a tip to remember from last year, uh, was when those when the first month has nuclear wide receivers, yeah, yeah maybe yeah. move them for that prime value. Now, obviously, if you did that with Cooper Cup, yes, you I'm were sad. Uh, uh, you're sad because he kept going the rest of the year. But for the most part, a lot of these guys who who did go nuclear at the beginning of the year, um. Hopefully you did. DJ Moore was the wide receiver four. Mike Williams was the wide receiver five. Terry McLaurin was the wide wide receiver six. Even Tyreek was the wide receiver two. Like the inconsistency of wide receivers, which we've talked about a lot, says that if they are really consistent at the beginning of the year, the odds are that that will be their best stretch. Now Cooper Cup broke yeah, yeah. everything, um, but I you know. As far as going forward, Keenan Allen is someone I will always draft. I will always be confident in. He just gets too many targets, is too good at football, too good at routes, and I'll never expect him to be a top five wide receiver. He is the best wide receiver, too, for your okay. team. The Chargers do have the second most cap space, so they could e they can easily franchise Mike Williams and absorb that large of a contract. They could make a splash. I don't... There's no good. No, there's no free agent. I mean, it's like receivers. it's Chris Godwin, but he's coming off a torn ACL. Who knows when he's going to be rem uh, ready to go? Well, you got Juju. Juju. Oh wait, he's coming off of a ma massive injury as well. But he played, right? That's true. He did get back yeah, at, the, I mean, at the end of the year. But he, we don't, you don't, you do not need Juju and Keenan Allen existing in the no. same space. Like that would be, that'd be the Spider Man gif. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We we don't need that. Bring Mike Williams back. I don't know, man. L l hold on. Okay. Real, real okay. talk. Okay. If you put Juju on one side, like, let's say you're going four wide, and you've got Juju in one slot and Keenan in the other slot. Yeah, be solid. Tell me, you can't just keep moving the chains just like six yards, seven yards, eight yards, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, but I don't care about the Chargers. Oh, you I, care about your fantasy. I care about Keenan Allen, okay, I and it. I want Keenan Allen to be great again. The 0%. The zero percent great. That's not games, happening, man. Well, that is going to continue to happen. I love Keenan Allen, but he is not a big game guy. He's just not. He's never been a touchdown machine, and he's not getting any younger at twenty nine. He's almost thirty years old now. He'll be thirty before the start of the season. So you're going to get more of the same. A lot of short, reliable PPR uh, fantasy points. That is going to do it, unless you have something else to add in, like. 
a life lesson about the truth about these wide receivers? You got anything? I will say this. As we were recording, um, it dawned on me. So I uh, last year, leaving the season, I said I want to remember to capitalize on these wide receivers who hit really strong at the beginning of the year. And I stuck to that. And it worked out for the most part well. It wasn't a hundred percent hit rate, but it it certainly there was is, a win. I got a I got a bad news for you. Oh. There is no such thing as a hundred percent hit rate in fantasy football. That is true. Um however I combine that with the fact that I believe that there was some some research. I can't remember I think it was Matt DeSorbo, one of our writers that that, that did this. But it's the exact opposite for running backs. Like running backs who start really, really strong. They just basically usually stay really, really strong. Okay. Um, so it's good to know maybe that's the direction you try to capitalize on one of those wide receivers, turning them into one of those running backs. Interesting. So uh, I'll, I'll dig deeper and see if that's true. That is going to do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you got some nuggets from this. We will see you on Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.